Why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Now, why is that? Well, my two cents worth, my view, okay? I give my two cents on it. Well, see, a rich person, they can invest, okay? They can invest their money and make money on their money. And another deal is, too, a rich person can invest and if they lose, they, they can absorb the loss, okay? A poor man can't invest. He don't have the capital to invest, okay? And also, if something happens, like an emergency, or he takes, well, it takes a loss, okay? He can't absorb it, okay? Because he don't have no capital to absorb. So in other words, you know, say if you say if you're working in and you've been with the same company for 15 years, all right, and, and say you lost your job, the company went out of business, the job market's bad, and uh, then you got then you start getting behind on your bills, okay? Say you you owe twenty thousand dollars on your credit card or something, and your house payment, your car payment. All this stuff starts to catch up with you, okay? Well, see, he can't absorb it as well as the rich man. The rich man can absorb that stuff. So if he if he gets in so much trouble where he has to file bankruptcy and his credit goes in the toilet, it's very hard to get that credit back, okay, and to, and to get back in the position where you was at at one time. But a rich man... You know, he can absorb this stuff, and plus, like I said, he can invest his money, make money, you know, uh, especially like if you're like like ex-presidents, you know, Bill Clinton, the speeches he gives and the big money he makes off his speeches. Uh, poor man can't do that. And also, you know, there's some rich people out there, mostly in Congress, okay, you can take the members in Congress. Uh, most of the most of them are crooks. Okay, a crook can get rich, especially if you're in Congress because you're above the law. And plus, they're very aggressive too. You take a crook. Well, a crook is very aggressive. Okay, he's going to plot. He's going to scheme. And he, he's going to do things where an average Joe is not going to do, and an average Joe don't want to do. See, an average guy, you know, he's with his family, cares about his family, he's going to work, you know, taking care of life. He's happy. He's enjoying life. He's not out there scheming and plotting, you know. But you take a crook, very aggressive, okay? So uh, it, it's just a tough deal for a poor man. And another thing with a poor man, he gets nickel and dime, too. See, that's another deal with a poor guy. The poor guy gets nickel and dime to death. I mean, uh, bills go up and uh, nickel dime over here and, oh, you got to pay this fee and there's a late charge and uh, uh, <laughs> all these little things that nickel and dime you. Okay, see, where the rich man, he can absorb all that stuff. Oh, who in the heck cares? I mean, you think a rich man cares, like, say, if his water bill goes up $10 a month? Do you think a rich man cares that his water bill goes up $10 a month? Or or if his electric bill goes up $10 a month? Or, or say, if his mortgage insurance on his house? See, there's another deal. You take your mortgage ins insurance on your home. Well, if that, if that insurance policy goes up, that's going to bump up your mortgage uh, payment per month. I mean, say if you're paying uh, home insurance and say it's uh, fifteen hundred a year, well, say if they jump it up to two thousand, well, what is that going to do to your mortgage uh, payment per month? Okay, and you, and you can't uh, con control that. You can't switch companies. Okay, and save to to switching. Uh, but it's just another deal where you, you can get nickel and dimed. Okay, well, why don't uh, home mortgage insurance, why don't it ever go down? Like if you stay with the same company, okay, 
Well, why don't you ever get uh, deals and letters in the mail saying, hey, your mortgage insurance is it's going from uh, 15, it's dropping down to 1,200. <laughs> you never get that. With a rich man, see, he can absorb that stuff. You know? So he, he stays rich. And plus, like I said, he has capital to invest. So he can make money elsewhere and increase his uh, his wealth where a poor man can't increase his wealth. It's not possible. He don't have the capital to do it. Then he's getting nickeled and dimed. Uh, you know, in the process, he's getting nickeled and dimed. He has no capital to invest. Then, then if something ever comes up where his income drops, or, or, if is, is, uh, or if his income goes in the toilet, then all these bills catch up with him. If he has to file bankruptcy, well, then you're really in the toilet then. Yeah, that, that's, that's a deal. You're really going to get poor, real poor then, because then you're not going to have the ability to get credit. You know, like if you want a new car or something, or if you want to fix something, bank ain't going to loan you nothing. So then where are you going to get capital at, man? So in my opinion on a poor man, poor get poor, okay? My view on that, you're in a bad situation, real bad. You really are, and it's no fun at all, and it just goes on, goes on and on, year after year, year after year. And what's going to change it? Not a whole heck of a lot, man. I mean, at least you're a real smart guy, and you start going after adventures where you can make more money or bring more money in, but if you're kind of an average guy, you're going to be in trouble, you know? I mean, but the only thing that's going to relieve you is death. You know, when you pass away and die, well, then you get relieved from all them pressures of being dirt poor, man. Sure, sure no place to be, I can tell you that.